Can I say it was easy? No, I can't. Nest.js is a kind of intricate framework for running a backend based on Node.js. In case someone else hasn't had a chance to try it out, it's uh, not just a nice to have, but a must have, because it is now listed in every second vacancy. Without dwelling on this for too long, I'll say this. The code looks cleaner and more concise. It also takes a lot of effort to mess it up, because many checks won't let you do it. Here is the doc. Everything is clear and understandable. It all starts with main TS. There is nothing really interesting here. Next is the app module. It includes all the necessary services and controllers. The connection to the database is also configured here. And so in order. Imports. First the configuration, so that the app can read any variables. Then connect to the database. By the way, the doc says that connection to several databases is supported. Then we need the modules. We will have the user module and the telegram bot module. Everything seems simple, but to get to this point I had to sit and rack my brains a bit. Then comes the controller. We are not interested in it as well as in the app service, since it is the telegram bot that will interact with the backend and the database. The common directory contains some commonly available constants and utilities. Interfaces, everything is logical. Schemas for the database. This is more interesting. Let's take a look at one schema, the user schema. The scheme is created using the scheme decorator of the same name. Here you can also specify timestamps so that records such as created and updated are automatically made for each item. We export the user class with a set of necessary prop types. Additional options are specified directly in the prop. At the bottom I commented on how a reference to another collection should look like. And don't forget to hydrate the document. As you can see, there are some similarities with Express, but it has its own nuances. Let's go through the user. Everything starts with a module that includes the service and the user controller. It also specifies which Monaco collection this module should work with. Don't forget to export the user module. Endpoints for requests are registered in the controller. They work with the help of the corresponding service, in this case the user service. Simply put, it looks like a base URL plus user piece plus the necessary tail. Here are the types of requests. Post, get, and others. The service is directly queries to the database. It was unusual for me that there was no repository here. But in general, I can live with it. In the classic way, we make requests to the Mongo through the model. If we need to populate something, we add a statement like this. DTO is pain and salvation at the same time. Pain is to describe them and salvation is when you have already prescribed them and it becomes a reliable defense against a fool. By the way, I didn't find any other option than to use mongoose push methods and had to add it to DTO. If anyone knows if this is correct or no, please comment. We smoothly approached the most interesting thing, Telegram bot. To launch the Telegram bot on Nest, you can use the following library, Nest.js Telegraph. It supports all Telegram methods, so interacting with the Telegram bot API is intuitive. Here too everything starts with the Telegram module. 
in the imports, we connect the config to read the NVIDIA variables. Next, we say that work with sense and of course the bot's telegram token will be available. Add the user module as they need to interact with each other. We add the telegram service and controller plus the necessary sense to the providers. Controller. All the necessary handlings are registered here, like endpoints in a regular backend. We need an update listener. We get it from the library. In the constructor, we inject the bot and add the service. Here we also initiate additional utilities for the bot. Button click actions, they leave a separate file and commands that the bot should understand. Of course, everything starts with the start command and uh, there is a corresponding decorator for this. Messages live in a separate file. To define your own specific command, use the command decorator and pass the name of the command with a string. We make requests to the database through the Telegram service, which interacts with the user service in our case. The action decorator is button clicks, accepts either a string or a regular ex expression. Entering a scan is done in the usual way. All scans are in constants for easy interaction. There are also payloads to the buttons. The Telegram service makes queries to the database using the service user. In this way, we use ready-made methods of other necessary services. Telegram Utilities. The name speaks for itself. Here you can find utilities that are only appropriate for a Telegram bot. For example, to skip a step in a scan, share a phone number, and so on. Telegram Actions. This is where the methods for clicking on button sleep. We write the actions themselves in the controller and we can put additional methods for processing clean data into actions to avoid creating too much code in one place and make it easier to maintain. Comments, an array of objects with comments. Messages, text messages used by the bot. And the last file is the scenes. I suggest creating a separate directory for scenes because there will obviously be more than one. In our case, these are wizard scenes and there is a corresponding wizard decorator for them, which accepts the name of the scene of type string. If necessary, we can initiate auxiliary classes such as utilities in the constructor. And then we just write the steps of the scene. Step 1 and its handlers. We move to the next step and so on. Exit the scene is in the same way. As you can see, it's very similar to the classic telegraph, but I think it's more visual. Also, you have to sweet a bit with all of these decorators, injectors, and others. Phew, we did it. I didn't go into details, because if you haven't tried to run a bot on telegraph, there's nothing to go into here. This is already a next level bot. Plus, as always, I'm attach a link to the Git repository where you can check it out for yourself. Don't forget to put stars, you don't care, but I'm pleased. You know, when cars are repaired, they are always launched at the end. 
So we need to check if everything is going to work properly and if the boot is coming to life. That's all.